the F5 tornado grinds through the heart of Brandenburg. At the Messenger newspaper office, the Willis family is unharmed. They stumble out of the basement and into a different world. I saw devastation. The town was just destroyed. This was the end of Brandenburg as I knew it. Jane learns that the friends she visited moments before are dead. It was absolutely overwhelming. More tornadoes break out across the South, the Midwest, and the Ohio River Valley. Perhaps the strongest tornado of all is the one that hits Xenia, Ohio. As it barrels into town, most residents are completely unaware. Like many other communities in 1974, Xenia, with a population of 25,000, doesn't have tornado sirens. 17-year-old Maureen Clark is seven weeks from graduation at Xenia High. It was the scariest moment of my life because it was just this black, ominous thing out there that was coming towards us very quickly. It just looked like a bomb had been dropped in front of the high school. As we turned around and looked at the building, all of the windows were shattered. There was no second floor. It was gone. The prospect of rebuilding is daunting. It was a mind-boggling disaster. And I thought, how are we going to get back to where we were? And how long is it going to take? For the forecasting community and tornado scientists, the aftermath of the outbreak is painful. Over the next decade, old radar technology is phased out. By the mid-1980s, the National Weather Service implements a newer radar system nationwide called Doppler. You can actually see winds within these thunderstorms, and that's what is so critical in order to be able to tell if, say, there's going to be damaging winds or if a tornado is forming within the storms. This is a dish that sends out a signal, a very large signal, into a uh, thunderstorm, and then it bounces back. The thunderstorm will actually bounce back a portion of that signal. That's what allows us to actually see the intensity of the rainfall, and this is the key thing, seeing the uh, actual speed and motion of the storm uh, particles within the thunderstorm. Today, there's a new generation of radar. NEXRAD is a national network of 153 high-resolution Doppler weather radars operated by the National Weather Service. Well, the radars that we're seeing here today are off the scale compared to what we could see back in the 70s. I can zoom into a particular storm quite easily, and then I can get up close and personal with a particular storm. You couldn't do that back then. That's a circulation within the thunderstorm. That's indicative that that thunderstorm is producing damaging winds and likely producing a tornado. That's the kind of thing that we look for to issue warnings. That's the kind of thing that did not exist years ago. The internet also revolutionizes how people access weather information. Anyone with a high-speed internet connection can have more data on their home computer today than any forecaster in any office had in 1974 during the uh, super outbreak. These advances in technology and communications have clear results. The average warning lead time for tornadoes increases to 13 minutes. For Maureen Clark, the Xenia tornado taught her to be watchful of the weather. We look for how winds are shifting. We really listen to what the forecasters are saying to us. While all the technology in the world is no guarantee of survival, there is no doubt it can keep people safer. The more information you have, the better decisions you can make, and the better uh, uh, you can keep your family and your loved ones safe.